Let's compare a box blade versus a lamp plane, give you the information, help you make your own decision on the best tool. I'm going to interject some of my own opinion as well, but I want to give you a lot of, of facts, okay, and, and just the reality of what each tool is and what their primary purpose is, but it doesn't mean that's all they can do. And we've used both these tools a lot in different videos, and what we have going on right now is driveway expansion out here at my property. Um, kind of phase two out of probably four or five phases is going to end up being and we're uh, filling in a, an old dirt lane making it turn it into a gravel lane and there's been hundreds and hundreds of yards of, of uh, gravel that have been brought in and we had some oh some cheaper gravel uh, that's got a lot more clay content and then to kind of serve as a base and then topping it off with a, a cleaner primarily stone with some some fines in there too some 21 AA as well so we're going to use both of these tools today on this next section of gravel actually a couple of days ago uh, we have a really good uh, dump truck driver out here and he tailgates everything out so it makes the grading job actually a heck of a lot easier versus if you can avoid having a, a pile of stone or dirt or anything dropped in a big old pile where you have to scoop it up and then try to level it out if they can at least rough spread it you know if they're not even a very good tailgater it makes a big difference and a big time saver so just a a bit of advice for you there but i'm a visual learner and i think a lot of you guys are as well and so that's what this video is about is to show you well and you might have to watch it multiple times but to show you the differences in how you control these tools as an operator too and in general a box blade is going to take a a, a higher level of experience with a, a tractor and the three-point controls and how to use it and make it work effectively compared to a lamp plane. It's going to be, I don't want to make it sound oversimplified, but you pretty much drop it down and just drive along and let it do its thing. Whereas a box blade, you need to be constantly feathering the controls, um, be very aware of how much material you're trapping and, and then spreading back out. And so there's just going to be a difference there. And it's, it's a lot easier for a newer operator well, it's a lot easier for an experienced operator to use a land plane as well uh, compared to a box blade. Hammer on pricing first. Land planes are typically going to be a bit more expensive than a box blade would be. Um, I honestly, I don't know why. I haven't asked manufacturers. If you look at the design, there's more square tubing on a eight foot land plane versus an eight foot box blade. Uh, longer side walls. You still have two blades on here. I don't know. They're always just a bit more. It doesn't really matter what manufacturer it is. You can get the pricing for these attachments at our website, goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. These are going to be the biggest that we sell, eight foot, but we sell them all the way down to four foot. So eight, seven, six, five, four foot uh, in both these types of attachments. A three-sided box, all right? The open, or the, the front, I should say, is open on the box blade. Okay, you can push or pull with a box blade. You're going to have a blade on the inside and a blade on the outside on the back so you can push backwards of that pull forward whereas on the lamp plane you have two rows of offset blades all right and i'll get to the offset reasoning and, and benefit here in a minute but that means you really it's not designed to push backwards you're, you're primarily going to pull forward and you will see me use uh, this tool to to go backwards with it and i think that's very beneficial for some like the the very final grading when you want to get everything just absolutely perfect because you're kind of neurotic <laughs> and that's when you can use that to your advantage um, i wouldn't suggest doing it trying to push large volumes of material but for that final detail that finishing touch i think it's worth doing now everything's straight across those blades on the box blade over here to go forward and backward but on the land plane again they're offset a bit and so what that helps you do is to not only have the ability to to move material forwards and backwards but move material left to right too. So uh, a great example of that is if you want to crown your driveway because you don't want to have water pooling in the middle of it, you can start on the outside of your driveway as long as the angle is the right way and you're going to be able to slowly, gradually pull material towards the center of that driveway and get that crown in there. Um, and in fact, in, in this application, and maybe you'll pick up on it too, I'm actually, well, I'm going both ways. I'm, I'm sort of pulling the crown towards the middle, but then I'm going the opposite direction and sort of pushing it back out with a little bit less. I don't want too big of a crown. I want just enough, just barely, because up here in Michigan in the wintertime, we have to, to plow to clear the snow off of our drives. And I don't want to have to deal with a big hump in the middle where I'm trying to run my flat snow pusher or plow across it and it's not doing what I want to do. So I want just a hint of that. So far, I've really kind of been hammering home more driveway maintenance or 
installing a driveway, even a gravel driveway. But there's some other purposes you can use these tools for, of course, and a box blade is, is like the gold standard. It's been around forever. It's one of the staples to move dirt or move earth around. And if you are landscaping a new house or re-landscaping uh, your house, it doesn't really matter. If you're looking to move large volumes of material from one point to the other, you can trap a lot more material inside a box blade with these higher sidewalls than you can with a land plane. The land plane is designed to not hold a lot of material and you'll see it bunch up sometimes, but it's still gonna slowly feather out and filter out to give a nice, clean, consistent finish. Whereas that's the difference with the box blade is you can haul that big old pile of dirt from point A to point B, but then you have to be really good at mastering your three point lever to slowly feather it up and, and release that material from underneath the edge of the box blade and, and get it to plane out just like you want to. It's just so much easier to do with the land plane. And so it's not that you can't do earth moving work with the land plane, it's just going to move smaller quantities of earth at a time. But the trade off could be the fact that you're leveling it out more consistently, taking less time than it would with a box blade. Before I go too much further though, I need to talk about a hydraulic top link. Nope, it's not a land plane or a box blade. You don't buy it with one of those. It's a separate product, but it makes life so much easier. I essentially, once in a while, I'll wanna use one of my tractors that doesn't have a hydraulic top link. And it's like the dumbest decision I've ever made every time I decide to do it. Because if I need to grade something out, or it could even be a tiller, it doesn't matter what it is, or a landscape rake. Changing the angle on the fly is a huge time saver, a huge convenience. It improves your efficiency. It improves, improves the effectiveness of the tool that you're using. You know, if you wanted to slowly feather out some material, not dig down too deep with a land plane or a box blade, you just do that on the fly with a lever. You gotta have a rear remote on your tractor to control it. And right now, these are only, I've really only found them on Amazon, and, and that's where I bought both of mine, one for uh, the Gaboda, one for the Summit tractor. But I'm telling you, I, I can't oversell that product. You guys that have one out there, Tell me if I'm lying, they're a game changer. All right, everything, every land plane, every box blade that we sell has these things right here. Shanks, scarifiers, rippers, they're called several different names, except for the 48 inch land planes. And that's from Dirt Dog, that was from an old company I used to work with, um, Tower River, that was from Befco, that's from um, a few other companies too that I've done business with or, or um, browsed over the years. It's just a recurring theme where 48 inch land planes don't have ripper shanks. I don't, I, I don't have a good answer. Now I will say it's probably the least used feature on either one of these tools. I almost never use my ripper shanks. Um, I've done it for video just to kind of show it so you can, again, can have a visual. But where they're gonna be beneficial is going to be when you're ripping up real hard pan, right? If you have a rutted up lane that's just been unmaintained for, I don't know, 20 years or something, and it's got a lot of potholes and it's just super hard pack in the middle of summer, that's where those shanks are gonna be beneficial, right? Because all that weight, when you put these things pointed down to the ground, all the way to the box blade is gonna be resting right on these individual little points. And so they're gonna rip down through the ground quite a bit and uh, help break up those, those potholes and help break up that hard pan. And then you can take them back out and then do all your smoothing and regular grading. But it's not that you can't use the regular blades, you know, the cutting edges that are on the box blade or the land plane to dig down through that stuff. It is gonna take some more effort to do that, but beyond that initial kind of deep digging application, I, I basically never use them. I, I just never use them. Um, they're in this storage position the rest of the time, and that's going to be different for other folks. And I understand that there's gonna be certain probably commercial applications too, where uh, you're doing a lot of, um, you know, new installations or maybe redoing a whole gravel driveway for a customer and you're gonna use it more frequently. And so that can be a big deal. But you're probably also not using a 48 inch land plane. You're probably using something bigger like a, a 60 inch or larger on a bigger tractor to get your jobs done quicker. And so it's a mute point. So a little bit about Dirt Dog and why we choose to work with them. Well, number one, they're gonna be made in America. All right, they're down in Georgia. They're a relatively small company but they're making really high quality products. And we've been selling these for, I think three years now and just absolutely love them, you know? And everything's gonna have issues and we have issues on occasion. We sell a lot of their stuff and so it just makes sense, but their customer service and support is top notch as well. And you've seen me talk about other companies before, how I won't work with them any, anymore or things change or whatever else. And so I, I am constantly trying to only work with the best companies out there. I want 
good features, I want a reasonable competitive price point, and I want high quality, all right? And made in America is a huge bonus. Oftentimes that stuff is just too expensive, but in this case, they're right in that sweet spot. As far as I can remember, I think all of the dirt dog attachments are quick hitch compatible, all right? Like this red hunk of steel that's on here. Quick hitches are sweet, make hooking up to attachments and disconnecting an absolute breeze. Um, especially with bigger, beefier ones like this, it just makes the job so much easier. So highly recommend getting yourself a quick hitch if you're gonna be swapping out attachments on a regular basis. But they can also hook right up to the category one three-point hitch. And on the bigger guys like this, the eight foot, and I think the seven foot as well, it'll say on our website, they're gonna be category one and category two compatible. Now we asked Dirt Dog to give us a universal color that kind of went along with everything. And so uh, we had asked for gray actually, and so they provided that for us. It wasn't a color that they offered, but now that's what we're stocking. We stock the gray color, but we are able to special order if you want to get you know, a Kubota orange or a John Deere green or blue or red or whatever, just know that those aren't going to be in stock. Um, we're going to have to submit that order to the factory. And then when it's ready, which lead time depends on the season, right? Uh, if you're ordering in the winter, it's going to be a shorter lead time. If you order in the dead of summer, you're probably going to have to expect a longer lead time if you want those special colors. But know that it's available if you're looking for that option. So these are simple tools. You know, there's not a lot going on, not really moving parts, not a lot to break. That's great, right? And you can even use one of these if you need to in a pinch as some ballast weight. You know, a lot of guys will hang suitcase weights on the side rails of the, uh, the box blades to get that extra ballast weight on there. And on that note, you know, we talk a lot about ballast weight too, and these tires are loaded here. All my tractor tires are loaded. Rim Guard's our channel sponsor for good reason, and we talk about it from a safety aspect a lot, but Man, I hope we have the audio because it'll be cool if you can hear this machine straining and struggling, especially when it's going uphill, uh, pulling one of these tools. I can't remember which one it was, but it needs that traction to put the power to the ground. And, and if you're just sitting there spinning because you can load one of these up and if you don't have enough weight that's getting power to the ground, your tires are gonna sit there and spin. They need to kind of dig in and, and do the work that, uh, that you're paying for with that big engine. So that's another benefit from the work aspect of having a lot of ballast weight, you know, both inside your tires and on the three-point hitch to get your jobs done. Typical recommendation on size, you're gonna see this is just slightly wider, okay, eight foot, about six inches wider either way than my tractor. I think this is a great fit. You're gonna wanna either match up with your tires or be just slightly wider. You don't want it to be like a foot wider. You'll start to bog down in too many scenarios. It becomes uh, annoying to use, ineffective to use, and there's a, a big tendency to want to get the biggest you can possibly get on your tractor. But oftentimes that has some unintended consequences that are going to take the joy out of driving on your tractor. If you're not sure what one to get though, send us an email, happy to make a recommendation on size. Just give us your tractor make and your model, and we'll match it up for you. So again, get all the models, all the specs, all the pictures, all the pricing at goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country every day of the week. Not just these tools, but pretty much anything you could possibly need for your three-point hitch or your front-end loader. And if you want to see these tools in action, check out the other videos. Just like this one, a lot of projects showing you how these tools work or sometimes how not to use things. Either way, we have a good time doing it. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.